Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets, Frank and Craig with me. Uh, <laughs> Frank, does Klopp... Oh, Dan, Dan, sorry, Klopp sorry, sorry, Dan, Dan, sorry. Just one thing, because I forgot, you know, before I forget, I'm sorry to cut you off. It's a big day for me, you know, because it's, uh, somebody's getting older today, and uh, it's my daughter. She's, go she's 30 today. Oh, congratulations. But she's not the only one. Congratulations, Frank. Thank daughter. you. What's her name? Yeah, uh, it's Jade. 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 And... Uh, yeah, and uh, but she's not the only one. I was told that somebody is getting older as well. Yep. Dan, yep. happy birthday, Thank my dear. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very kind. What a, what, a way, what a way to spend it with you two. F 50. <laughs> <laughs> I feel 50. Isn't it horrible? Yeah. 40. Young. Ah, 40 years old. Oh. All right then. Does Klopp need ah. a vacation, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well in, some pi in some pictures today, you know, we saw him, I think it was when uh, um, Natalia Phillips got injured a little bit or went on the floor and he was looking at the player and said, no, no, not one again, not one again. And uh, yeah, I think he's really fed up uh, and it's just the beginning because <laughs> through the Boxing Day, I think we can have, oh we can God, have some yeah. damages. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, yeah, maybe, maybe he needs some, uh, some vacation, but he's not the only one. <laughs> It's Castle, bit... Rock, Brett will need a... Castle Rock, Brett will need a vacation if Tottenham lose tomorrow. Uh, it's... Oh, <laughs> is, is he a Spurs fan? He's a big, he's a big Spurs fan. Oh, I see. does he abuse you? No. Oh. No, 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 no. He doesn't abuse me. No, sometimes. <laughs> is <laughs> he... he's a... No, no, he's a big Spurs fan. Oh, there you go. Um, on a, a similar subject, as a player, is there really a big difference between a 12.30 kickoff and a 3 p.m. kickoff on the same day in relation to recovering from a game played 63 hours earlier, Craig? I, I personally don't think it makes a... I don't think we would have batted an eyelid at that. Now, if you're asking for an extra day's rest with the signs that they've got these days, an extra, you know, 20 hours, 24 hours, with all the... Uh, the support that the modern player gets with the, the nutrients and the supplements, then yeah. But two and a half hours, I mean, we're, we're clutching at straws uh, if you think that's going to make a big difference. Frank? Now, that's not the point. Yeah, that's not the point for me. The point is when you play at 12.30, you have to wake up pretty much early, uh, around 7, 7.30, where when you play at 3 p.m., you can wake up at 9, 9.30, so almost have a normal life for a football player because we're not like everybody else, sorry. We don't wake up at 6 or 7 to get ready at 8. Uh, so we are more used to wake up around 8, except if we have kids, but it's what we normally wake up is around 8. And if you play at 3, it's like a normal night through, uh, th a normal night that you have to go through and a normal wake up. Hey, listen, we used to... Hey, we'd be up at 7.30 anyway at a hotel for the big fry-up breakfast. No, no matter what time we're playing. Sausages, beans, eggs, hash browns, toast. The game's in five hours. I don't care. Get it on the plate. Get up for seconds again. Sugar in the tea. Oh, the love. Up to the room. Little lie down. Oh, oh how's that going to go before the game? So, I don't know. Yeah. There could be, a, I mean, we're getting into fine detail here about sleeping patterns and stuff, but yeah, uh, I don't know. You you are very much the opposite to Steve Nichol, Craig. You get up early, don't you? Steve get, Steve says getting up before midday is early. Yeah, he is a one-off in that sense, because as you know, at the, you know, Steve plays golf with me and a lot of the lads that I play with, and I'll say to them, like, he needs to set his alarm for... You know, he could easily, if I said to him, we've got a 10.30 tea time or an 11 a.m. tea time, <laughs> which we don't normally do, he would say, okay, I'll set my alarm for 10.15. And I'm like, I've had five hours by then. <laughs> by that time, I'm, I'm on lunch, you know, because I'm up at like, you know, if I'm teeing off at 8 a.m., I don't have to set an alarm. 7.30, I don't have to set an alarm. Stevie has wow. to set an alarm. I mean, it's a marvellous skill to have, isn't it, if you like sleeping a lot. Uh, but most people... Particularly when they get to the age of 40 plus, Daniel. Yes. Uh, start to wake up <laughs> earlier in the morning. Oh, that's, a, that's something to look forward to. Frank, what time are you up? Uh, I, well, normally around 9.30, 10. That's I late. don't take any appointment before 11. Yeah, I don't, I don't take any appointment wow. uh, uh, before 11 in the morning. Wow. I'm, I'm a, I like to, I go to bed around 1.30, uh, yeah. 2, especially when I work with you guys and after games in Champions League or late games during the week, 
we talk and I finish around 12.30. And because, and because you put me under pressure so much, you know, <laughs> I don't go to bed around before two to relax a little bit before. Now, I, I like to watch TV until late or read a book, and I don't go to bed around, but not before one at least. So I wake yeah, up around 9, 9.30. But, but he'll go to yeah. bed at 11 and still get up at 11. Yeah. Or 12. Yeah. I'm usually sleep. in bed. I, I could be upstairs by 10 o'clock, but once the seltzers kick in, <laughs> I'm, I'm out of the game. That's it. Uh, this is probably yeah. putting everyone to sleep. Right. Would listening yeah. in on a conversation between VAR officials and refs make things more clear in terms of how they're coming to these conclusions? Wouldn't it give the league intel on what needs changing, etc.? We see this, of course, Craig, in rugby a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is a, a place that... that, that TV in particular, because it's not going to affect the the, uh, the fans at the stadium when you start having stuff like that coming across the tunnel. It's not going to work. But certainly for the viewer at home, I think that would be a nice conversation to hear. Just how they get to the end point mm. of a decision, good or bad, right or wrong, but how they got to that point and what they were seeing. Uh, as you say, Rugby Union and some other sports have it. I really enjoy it in Rugby Union because it's crystal clear. Uh, and I would, I would like to see uh, football trying to bring that in. Uh, we're having baby steps with this technology as it is, but yeah, I think that is something that would be really good and really insightful for the uh, for the viewer at home. Frank, you've come up against Roberto Baggio quite a few times during your time with the French national team. Do you <clears> think <throat> that in terms of skills and abilities, he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Italian player of all time? Wow. He, he was absolutely fantastic. He got injured a lot uh, during his career and uh, that's why maybe we don't think about him when we think about the best player in the world, but definitely he had his, uh, his peaks and, and his peak and, the, and, and, and when he was at the best, he was really one of the best. But in terms of best, best Italian ever, I have to put in the same position, I have to put Gianfranco Zola. I mean, the, the, the guy was absolutely fantastic. I had the chance to to see him playing when he played for Italy uh, against England at Wembley and he just signed for Chelsea. And uh, he, I played with him for like five years. The guy was a genius, really a genius. Don't forget that we, we, we lately talked a lot about Maradona. Mm. Is, is the one who a little bit uh, say, that's the end of Maradona in, Nap in Naples when Mar Zola went because he took his place. He was absolutely fantastic, fantastic player. You know, Gab, Gab Mercotti and, and, and some of our other colleagues would know the historical side of the national team way better than us because they, they've had so much success over the years, Daniel. But, but you know, we, sh we should never just put this down to attacking players. I know Frank mentioned uh, Gianfranco. Roberto Baggio was a great player. But they've had so many in 1982 World Cup. Paolo Rossi, mm. you know, the list is endless. You know, Franco mm. Baresi and, and Maldini, you know, with... You just yeah. don't get any better than that. You know, Claudia Gentili, many, many years ago, the rugged defender. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's hard to quantify to say the greatest Italian player when they've had so many in so many different positions. Do, do we talk about Gentili or not? No, 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 not really. About who? Gentili, do you remember Gentili? Dan he was doesn't a butcher. know who he is. <laughs> no, Gentili was a butcher. I mean, that was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, which European league would you say is the most entertaining right now? Frank, we make you watch a lot of football. Which league is the most entertaining for uh, you? We know you hate Italians. <laughs> I don't hate Italians. I think Italian league dropped dram dramatically and reached the same level as the Ligue 1 in France. Wow. Um, I would say that um, <laughs> it's between... So it's many funny, people it's... up by saying <laughs> that. I don't care. I don't care. It's what I think. We saw. We, we, we can see that in Champions League or Europa League, you know, that Italian teams are struggling uh, against others. For me, the most interesting uh, league will be between the, the PL and the Bundesliga. Because I think in Germany, we have good football. It's offensive football. It's very entertaining. But I will go for the PL, of course. Frank's oh. upset the attack. You know, they always oh, upset they them. Are they, they're going to get really angry at him for saying Oh, that. they get really angry. They'll, they'll say, look at Atalanta, the Champions League and, last uh, year. Who, who, say, who, who, who said, who said, who taught me, except Atalanta, that's true. I love Atalanta the way they play. Oh. But uh, who taught me, uh, I don't give a stuff 
It's you, Craig. I don't give a stuff <laughs> when you don't want to talk bothered. about something. Not bothered, I believe, yeah. is the expression. No, my answer bothered. is, what, yeah, what, yeah, what exactly. league do we pay the most rates for? That's my answer. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my corporate ticket for the day. Um, where are we? Uh, are Chelsea capable of breaking down a sitting team like Tottenham based on recent form? Will they? Well, we saw during the show, both of you said it was going to be 2-1 to Chelsea, Craig. Well, if you look at the sitting teams that they've played... Uh, recently uh Burnley would be considered that Newcastle last week was certainly a, a, a team that were at home camped in to defend I think if you look at the possession stats that would tell you but you would have known that even going into the game it was crystal clear that Chelsea were going to have 60 or 70 percent possession at St James's Park so that was another process in breaking teams down and there, there have been others this year I think you know, and I'd have to look back at the fixtures, but but I think Tottenham are going to be the most organised of the, the deeper setting teams, there's no doubt about that, with arguably the biggest threat in the transition to the counter-attack. Uh, although they are missing Alder Wereld, they are still going to be arguably, arguably the, the most difficult to break down. But Chelsea have faced that already this season, just not that standard of team, I'd say. Good stuff, boys. That's it. That brings us to the end of today's Extra Time. Thank you very much, as always, for your tweets. We'll be back. Happy birthday, old man. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll Happy see birthday! The I can, I can, I can see the grey hairs. Yeah, the, the grey hairs, definitely. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah Frank, right, you're yeah, in no right position right. to talk about hair. Right, that's it. Frank, he's going to the back already, look. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, show us your little, how's your little halo going, Craig? I filled it in. <laughs> <laughs> Covid's given me time to fill it in. Oh yes. Frank's got too much. Ah, like a like a former New uh, York mayor, maybe. Uh, that is it. Uh, that brings us to the end of today's show. We will be back tomorrow for more. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>